All right, uh, another drawing for Fusion 360. Uh, a really great student of mine emailed me to tell me that there was no audio in my uh, first video. I didn't actually go back and check that, but I believe the student because um, I was having mic problems on this laptop for a little, little bit. It's a hardware issue that's now been fixed. Um, so we have your part open. All right, this one is good to go. File, new drawing from design, all right, from scratch in an inch. The only thing we need to change here is the size. I want it 11 by eight and a half, hit okay. Now, once it gets this open, there's gonna be that big thing in the bottom here, all right, and it wants me to start placing the base view. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the base view, all right, that's in there. Now I'm gonna go over here, Click that little arrow. I'm going to turn off the visibility of that box there. All right, so I got my base view. Great. Um, let me double click on it. I want to change the scale here. One to four is way too small. One to one, well, that's probably a little too big, right? Um, let's try 0.75. That should be all right. All right. Now, we have to place some projections on this, right? I don't like the, this the only thing that's weird about this is how you move it. Um, projected view, you click that, all right? Select the parent view, and then place projected view. Okay, that's from the front. I wanna go up here, place the top, and I wanna place the isometric. Now, in the kit, and then I hit the check mark. Now, in the case of this one, the isometric view, I'm gonna double click that, I'm gonna make it shaded. And I'm gonna change the scale. I'm gonna drop the scale down to 0.5 here. Um, delete all this. Whenever it's red, that means it's not gonna work. 0.5. The isometric view does not have to have the same scale as the rest of your model. We don't actually put any um, dimensions on that. Now, Next thing I'm gonna do is put the center marks on the holes. All right, cool. Um, that's gonna be this one. Boom, 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 boom. Now this hole, it won't let us select in Fusion 360 to put a center mark on it because it's not in a vertical plane. Now it might, yeah, it won't let me in in that view either. That's interesting. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute. That's going to make dimension this a little bit interesting. And we also do this one, center line. And the way you put center lines is you click each side of the hole and it'll put a center line. Now, why do we do that? Well, just so that we know that those hidden lines that are those dashed lines are, are indeed holes. All right? Cool. Now, um, we start dimensioning. We start dimensioning everything um, in the view that shows the contour. In the view that shows the contour. All right, so dimensions. Click that. All right. And uh, it always puts this box around it, which I don't love, but it is what it is. I'm going to do the length and width overall of this thing in this view. All right. It, we usually wanna put dimensions between the parts, which we saw in the one video. Sometimes we put them to the outside parts. I don't like putting dimensions towards the isometric too much, unless it's this view here. I don't know why, it's just personal preference there. So that's our overall length and width. Um, I dimension the holes in here now you know, what's interesting here is ah here we go does it let me do a whole dimension hole and thread no let's see what it says there we go cool that's awesome it automatically detects those in that view that's awesome I'm going to do the same thing while I'm at it down in this view. 
That is cool. So it finds two of them. Look at that. 2x. Oh, beautiful. Very cool. So you go to text and you do a hole and thread note and it automatically finds your holes and even did the 2x automatically. That's really cool. Okay. I might move that later on. We'll see. Um, I need to dimension the locations of those holes. All right. So we do that in this view. Now, I got to move this dimension. Let me hit escape. I got to move this dimension over a bit. So this does bring up something I might. I might move this dimension to the other side. Let me delete this dimension. Let me see if I can move this five in a little bit. All right. No, that looks too, that's too close. That arrow is too close now. I don't like that arrow being right there. Let me zoom in a bit. I want to get that moved out kind of like, like that. All right, I prefer that. Um, so that is going to change the way I do the overall length and width. Put it over here now. This drawing, oh, let me show you this. Um, with that dimension, let me escape. What I'm going to do after it, I'm going to put a space in PYP. I'm going to do the same thing to this dimension. All right. What that means is when you do that, what that tells the engineers that anywhere where you see that dimension, it's going to be that size. Now, unfortunately, this Fusion 360, this is a little bit, it's not putting stuff exactly where I want it. I'm just going to have to leave it there. Don't love that, but it is what it is. Tip means this, you can assume this one's the same dimension. All right. So now let's go down here to this view. All right. So that one's pretty well laid out. Let's see what we need in here. Laptop screen's kind of small. Not the best for me. Ooh, it's, it's running kind of slow. Um, let's mention this now. So we're going to need a few things here. We already have the overall width, so we don't need that. We will need this thickness of this line. We will need this thickness. We're going to need how big this distance is. And we're going to need how big this distance is. All right. Now, over here, we need from this corner to the center mark. Two inches, very nice. From there to the top, three inches, very nice. You can see it's starting to hit that though. So we're gonna have to think about moving some stuff around a little bit. We don't want those running into each other. Um, so let's see if I can move it down a little bit without causing too much ruckus. Now, a little too far, I suppose. All right, that looks okay. Um, you know what I might do? I might actually delete these up here and put them down here, nest them with this five. Well, that's going to cause that issue. Well, let me do it like this then. Put this one up here, and I'll put this one down here. Ooh, something's not right there. Control Z. Well, I guess I'll just have to leave them where I had them. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Escape, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. I'll leave those there. All right. I got the center of that hole, the height of this thing. Um, I don't need to do the length of this because it's an extrusion. It just goes all the way back in. All right, now over to here. I have everything I need here, I think. We'll, we'll see. We'll double check. Um, first things first, let's get the radius of this arc. So to do that, let's see. Dimensions, radius dimensions. Not let me select that edge. Dang. I'm just going to have to do uh, a note. 
on here. And you would write R equals zero. Well, they do it. Uh, the radius of that is one, I think. Yes, one. I know. All right, you just have to do it manually. R equals 1.0. Oops. Okay, and then let's see. Will it find the hole in thread? Oh, yeah, we'll find that. Great. Yep, there we go. That's good. Now, only thing left to do here um, is from here to here. From here to here. Actually, you can do it from here to here and be the same. Same difference. Um, from here to here. Oops, missed it. Let me zoom in a little bit here. From the center to the bottom. 0.5. And then from center to the side, it's also 0.5. I'm going to add that note in here made escape and the note space p y p same thing here space p y p that means typical anywhere where you see that dimension that's what it is um the only thing i have left to do here is to add the note on the champ the fillet on the corner nice r.5 beautiful so I should write this one the same way. Yeah, R.5. I should change that note not to be R equals 1.0. I wasn't sure what the syntax there was. Just R1, you're right. You know, that's a one inch radius. All right. I know how tall this thing is. It's from this draw. I know where this hole is located this way. I don't know where the low, the hole is located left to right. Um, I also forgot my center line bisector in this view. Um, now, where should I put that? Well, I guess I could put it here. Or I could put it here. Um, since I can't put a center mark, Kind of a pain, so I think I'll put it in this view. Um, let me hit escape, move this over a little bit. Come on, come on. I'll move the whole thing. I don't want to move just the. All right, so I'm going to put here to here, in right there, 1.5. So I'm telling you where the center of the hole is. Now I broke some of the rules here. The lines, whenever you're doing stuff with holes. Um, the, there's always going to be, oh, it did sort of put a center mark there. Whenever you do something with a hole, um, there's going to be a line going through the model. Now, this one here I still don't like. Let me escape real quick. Let me see if I can move that over. See, it wants to go. Oh, let's go like right there. So now it's, I got, what I got to do is I got to move the whole model over a little bit. And now everything fits on the page. All right, and the final thing to do there is to add your text box with your name on it. Um, the way I have this laid out, probably going to want to add the text box down here. That you just do like this, that, and then Mr. Harmon. Oh, physics time. Yeah. All right. Uh, engineering one part whatever and so on all right so that's how you do it in fusion 360 you should be able to hear me this time be good to go um i'll put this in that same google slideshow just to, so people can see what it looks like in fusion 360 all right all right all right see you later